All right. Hello, everyone. We have a special little treat for you today. Uh, <laughs> we are going to talk with uh, Valerie DeBille here uh, from the League of Women Voters. Uh, she is the Vice President of Voter Service. So, Valerie, welcome and thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, first of all, can you tell us what does the League of Women Voters do? Well, our our motto, our uh, operating principle is uh, empowering voters, defending democracy, which is a really good summary. Um, yeah, it's a nice forward, sums it all up. Um, but a, a broader answer um, is that uh, we grew out of the suffrage movement, um, basically when women, white women, got the right to vote in 1920. Everybody who'd worked really hard on that for a really long time was like, okay, so now what? Um, you know, we have all this free time on our hands. Um, and decided that, you know, we've got this huge percentage of the population that's newly enfranchised and has never done this before. And so what can we do to help them make sure that they're educated, make sure that they are informed? The League was founded out of that. It was basically all the old suffrage groups kind of joined together and became the League. So yeah, so that's that's basically the guiding principle is to make sure that people have the information that they need in order to vote, um, but also have somebody in their corner if they have problems. The other thing that we do, the, the defending democracy part of it um, involves uh, I say this very frequently, uh, but we are a nonpartisan organization. That means right. that we do not support or oppose parties or candidates. Mm -hmm. But nonpartisan does not mean apolitical. So right. we do have positions on issues. Um, we are against the Electoral College. We are in favor of reproductive rights. We are, um, you know, in favor of public education. Um, we are in favor of, you know, LGBT equality. We are in favor of racial equality and get you know, all of that. Um, and Unfortunately, right now, those issues are so very closely aligned with parties mm -hmm. that it can look like partisanship even when it's not. There's a lot of very, you know, like groups that are focused on specific populations. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's what sets us apart is that we aren't, you know, is that we are, we basically, if somebody invites us to come and register voters or come talk to their group or whatever, we will. You know, there's no, right. you know, how many young Latinos do you have? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I, I love yeah. that. I, no, no bigger tent than everybody. So I, I exactly like, that. like the size of that tent. Um, yeah. Now, uh, this uh, defending democracy thing, mm -hmm. real into that, um, which leads me to my next question. Yeah. Is the league affiliated with either DC or Marvel Comics? I'm guessing DC uh, sounds sounds like maybe an offshoot of the Justice League. Is that is that what's going on there? Um, actually, I don't think I want Zack Snyder directing anything that involves me, so I think I'm going to have to say we're probably more Marvel aligned. Also, Marvel uses the real world, whereas DC all uses my fake cities. So goodness, I think we I think we're probably hot takes. <laughs> I think we're Woo! probably more likely aligned with Marvel. Marvel is based in the real world, so there okay. we go. Okay, okay, that was that was a Caliente take right there. I love it. <laughs> I'm a Marvel girl myself. Um, yeah. Now, uh, let's let's talk about some things right now that are making voting more difficult than it mm -hmm. needs to be. Um, what are some of those things? Um, in Texas specifically, um, one, we have a lot of misinformation um, mm -hmm. that is coming from a lot of different places. Uh, in Texas, we have 254 counties and every county has their own um, elections department. And mm -hmm. while the Secretary of State sets like a baseline of rules, every county is kind of free to do whatever they want inside of those rules. And so if you move from one county to another, your voting experience is not necessarily going to be the same. It's still kind of the Wild West a little. <laughs> um, yes. And so so that's one issue um, is just okay. that there's not really a lot of consistency. Um, right. But as far as legal obstacles, um, one, we are, again, the league has a position. We are not super in favor of voter ID. Um, it's an obstacle for many, many people. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the the practical obstacles involved in getting one um, are insurmountable for some people, especially those who don't live in a major city. Um, right. I mean, uh, for example, like you can't get a driver's license without getting your social security card. The social security offices are all in the major metropolitan areas. What do you do yes. if you live in the middle of nowhere, West Texas, and you don't have a car? Like, right. how do you get that? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of that. Um, okay. And there are some organizations that help with that, but they only have so many resources. Right. So, um, you know, and then there's the cost associated with the thing itself, you know, which for a driver's license, you know, or something like that, you know, or a passport, you know, those involve the fees involved in getting them in addition to all of the other transportation and logistical issues. So right. that's the first obstacle. Um, mm -hmm. But then there's a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding about that particular obstacle, which is your driver's license can be expired up to four years. So if your driver's license is expired, you can still go vote. Um, oh, I didn't if you're, know that. 
yeah, <laughs> all of your forms of ID can be expired up to four years. Huh. Um, it, once you're 70, they can be expired like however long you need them to be. Um, wow. But your your address doesn't have to match. So if you move and you haven't updated your ID, mm -hmm. that's fine. It's to prove yeah. who you are, not where you live. Like your passport right. doesn't even have your address on it. And you sure. can use that as ID. So yeah, I'm an election judge. And as of today, I have officially been moved for one year. So and I still haven't updated my ID. So. <laughs> OK, but, but yeah, but you can still vote and you're going to vote. I can still vote. Yeah. OK. All right. Yeah. OK, good. Um, for those of us who have not been paying attention because we've mm -hmm. been watching hot ones and things like that, um, there was yeah. also a recent federal court ruling that has mm -hmm. some implications for voters, too. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that? Um, well, there have been several. There's, there was one that was about the, assist, the voter assistance, which is you're allowed to bring somebody to help you in the polls, like if you don't speak English and don't read English, right. um, mm -hmm. if you um, you know, need help moving, if you need help reading, um, right. if you need help, like maybe you have a tremor disorder and you can't push the buttons yourself, you know, like there's any number of degrees of assistance that you might need. And you're allowed to bring a person of your choosing to do that. And in okay. 2021, they passed a law that like had this fairly detailed disclaimer that you had to sign if you were an assistant. And mm -hmm. one of them was that basically you could read the ballot and that was it. And so like, if they asked you a question, you weren't allowed to answer it. Um, oh. You know, so if you, yeah. Um, but anyway, there, there was a recent ruling that basically that portion of that was unconstitutional. Um, that basically you can, if somebody, if you want someone to help you, they can help you in whatever way you want them to help you. They don't have to swear to not help you in certain ways. So, yeah. Like, was this a big problem? Was this a no, big problem it was that not. we were having? <laughs> it was Dude, not. Why are we spending no. time on this? <laughs> that's actually, that's probably the biggest frustration that I have with the whole legislative oh. thing is, well, there's two. One is, solving problems that aren't problems, um, you know, inventing solutions for problems that don't exist. Um, sure. There were a bunch There were a bunch of bills in 2021 that I referred to as the, you can bleep this if you have to, but fuck Harris County uh, bills. Because, <laughs> because in 2020, Harris County came up with a lot of really creative and innovative ways to help people vote in the pandemic. They had right. a whole situation set up in the Reliant Stadium parking lot where you could vote from your car. They mm -hmm. had... Um, you know, they wanted you to be able to drop off your mail ballot at all of the tax office locations. Yeah. Um, you know, there's just a bunch of things that they, they had 24 hour polling locations in several places. Um, and so 2021, it was like, got to shut all that down. Um, and so <sighs> in response to them sending mail ballot applications to people who were 65 or older, because maybe they didn't know they had to apply every year, mm -hmm. which is a reasonable thing to think. Um, right. And you automatically qualify if you're 65 or older. That's a thing in Texas. You you can vote by mail if you're 65. And so they just mailed an application to everybody in the county. That is now yeah. a state jail felony for the county to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you are no oh, longer. No. Grandma might get a mail in ballot. That would yes. ruin democracy. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. It's the end of democracy. Yeah. Um, you can't have 24 hour polling locations anymore. You can only be open from, I believe it's 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. is the longest you can have for polling location hours. Okay. Um, so no more 24 hour polling places. Uh, you can no longer vote the way that they worded. It was very clearly you cannot vote from a parking lot, uh, <laughs> but it was like just a bunch of things along those lines. Like they they wanted to ban voting in temporary structures, except that several of the people who were like rural representatives were like, every building in our county is legally attacked <laughs> structure by this time, <laughs> you know, by this, by the way you've worded this. And so, no, right. we're not going to vote for that, you know, but it was like all of these attempts were made to just basically stymie the ability of local officials to be able to react to situations. Um, you know, it was like, one of the questions I remember asking one of the legislators, I was like, you realize that a hurricane like hit the day before election day in Louisiana, like what right. were people supposed to do? Like under this bill that you've just written, like you would just say, OK, there's no election day, you know, because you're not right. allowed to make any. They wanted to make it so that the legislature had to oppose any changes. And I mean, it was like just a whole bunch of or had to approve any changes that local authorities wanted to make. And it was just this whole like, you know, super concentrated attempt to like really tie the hands of local folks and, and what they were and were not allowed to do. Um, and so, of course, you know, voter fraud is a bad thing. None of us wants voter fraud, um, you know, and that's I know that's the reason that keeps being given for yeah. all of these measures is we're trying to yeah. trying to fight voter fraud. And, oh, OK, I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. But also bad, you know, in addition to voter fraud is not being able to vote when you yes. should be. 
And so what's the right balance? Um, do we make people do a 5K through barbed wire and mud to vote? Uh, or should be, you be able to vote by just blinking? Like, where, where should the line be there? Um, I think if we had voting only by blinking, then only mutants would be able to vote. So I don't think that's a good idea. Back to circling back around to my Marvel nerdery. Um, but uh, then only specific mutants. That would be very discriminatory. The system that we have at the at the basics in Texas is you register to vote and then they mail you a thing that makes sure you live where you say you do. And mm -hmm. then you can vote. Yep. And we've never had large amounts in any anywhere, really, Um of, I mean, even the places that you hear about, like, you know, Chicago in the 20s, where dead people were voting, and, you know, all of that, like, even those were fairly limited in scope, and fairly right. limited to a specific election or a specific, you know, determined outcome, things like that. So I'm not going to say that they weren't happening anywhere ever. Um, but the idea that we have this, like, huge, large scale, um, you know, problem with insecurity in voting, um, you know, is mm -hmm. really a fallacy and always kind of has been. Um, so I think that to a degree, best balance really is in most cases, the one that affords the ability to vote unless you have a problem. Um, and so yeah. for example, you like when you sign in, okay, they make sure that you've signed in. Now mm -hmm. you can't vote somewhere else. You know, that's right. a good level of security. You've signed yes. in. Everything that you sign related to voting is a legal affidavit. You yeah. are taking an oath that says, I solemnly swear that I am really this person. You know, I, I solemnly swear that, you know, I haven't already voted. I solemnly swear that I really live what I say that I do. You know, all of those things are legal documents that you are signing every time you do that. And right. so the state already has remedies for prosecuting those cases in the event that something did happen, like you voted on behalf of your dead mom or whatever. Right. Um, you know, they have the ability to show that that was fraudulent. And so I don't think that we really need all of these extra, you know, bells and whistles, you know, because we've already at the very basics, we're spending so much time trying to prevent something that already happens rarely. And that time would be even less if we like just actually did go after the cases where it that did happen. And, and I'm just trying to imagine a world where, um, <laughs> we treated uh you know school shootings with the same level of urgency as we treat um one single case of voter fraud just, yes uh, that that's uh, <laughs> just to throw that out there throw yeah that out there just for no yeah. reason just a little yeah. thought exercise anywho yeah um let's talk about what happens uh you know when when people uh when people have a plan to vote okay mm -hmm. that this is a big thing we hear around this time of year you yep. got to make your plan to vote because you you don't want to wake up on election day and be like, oh, shoot, was that today? Oh, man, yeah. I, now I can't. You know, like you want to plan. And so we're in this period uh, right now of, you know, early voting, uh, which is great. I went this morning, I uh, got my sticker. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I live for that sticker. I'm like, yeah. give me that sticker. I'm ready for it. Um, so uh, let's talk about voting plans. What does your voting plan look like and what voting plan do you recommend uh, to the uh, folks out there. My personal voting plan is that I am an election day judge. And so mm -hmm. I am always the first voter at my polling location on election day because I want to test yeah. that machine before somebody else <laughs> tries to use it. There have been Good. twice in the, uh, what I guess is this probably my 15th election. I've been a judge. This is I've, twice I have found like, oh, our printer's not connected, you know, like because oh. I was the one who went first. And so it was always yeah. something we could solve, but it was something I didn't want to solve while there was a voter standing there waiting to vote. So yes. like 7 a.m., you know, 6.59, as soon as we turn those machines on, like, my vote is the first one that goes through. Um, so right. that's my plan. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I but, love that plan. <laughs> yeah, but that's not practical for most people. Um, sure. So for most people, I would say, you know, find a time when you're flexible, um, mm -hmm. number one. Um, you know, pick a day when you're flexible. You have from Monday, October 21st to Friday, November 1st, which is not fully two weeks, but there is a weekend in there. Mm -hmm. Um in Travis County, there is uh, there are there will be multiple locations that are open on Thursday and Friday, uh, Halloween yeah. and November first. That will be up until ten. Um, I don't know about other counties and what their hours are going to be, but Travis County is definitely on it. Um, and so find it, you know, figure out what time works for you. Um, and to a degree, you kind of want to make an appointment with yourself. Um, you know, mm -hmm. put it on your calendar, figure out a day. Yes. And if you and I always encourage early voting because 
if you get someplace and it turns out that, you know, oh, I got a flat tire or, you know, there's a line that's six hours long or, you know, whatever, you know, you can pivot, um, you know, you yes. can, you can fix that. You can get around it. Whereas if you wait till election day and you get a flat tire on your way to the polling location at five o'clock, you know, what are you going to do? Um, yeah. So I'll pick you up. So, I'll, I'll take you well, yeah, I mean, hopefully you have somebody who can help. But, you know, it puts a lot of stress on you that you probably just don't need. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, so basically, you know, try to vote early if you can figure mm -hmm. out where you're going to vote in Travis County and pretty much every county that touches Travis County. You can vote anywhere in the county, even on Election mm -hmm. Day. You don't have to go to your precinct. So you can vote on your way to work, on your way home from work, on your way to the grocery store, on your way to pick up your kids from school, you know, yep. while you're out tootling around town on Saturday afternoon, you know, like whatever. You can just find a place that says vote and you're as long as you're in Travis County, you're good to go. Now, you mentioned uh, uh, the the uh, the Halloween, uh, mm -hmm. the late late uh, option on Halloween. Uh, huh? I think really fun idea. Something that we've oh, yeah. been talking about is like doing a voting party, you know, yes. so like everybody like maybe knock off work a couple hours early on Halloween, uh, go get your costume on, uh, yep. go to that polling location, you know, just spice things up. It's going to, oh, yeah. it's going to be fun. Absolutely. Um, uh, we we definitely recommend these parties. Uh, we're doing uh, a, a virtual voting party. So uh, for all the people out there nice. over the next couple of weeks, once you vote, uh, you can send us a video afterwards of you with your little sticker on. And cool. uh, we will put those on our show. Um, but uh, if people want to do other kinds of theme parties, what are some other fun themes for a voting party uh, besides <laughs> the very obvious Halloween? Um, you got any other fun party ideas? I'm a big fan of suffragettes. I think that that's great. You know, mm. get, rather gather your girl gang and, you know, wear a white dress and a sash. Um, yes. You know, there you go. Um, I love that. And, and <laughs> get yourself a boater hat. That is very thematically yes. appropriate. Yeah. Silly hats. That's yep. what silly hats. needs more of is yes, fun, absolutely. silly hats. Yes, we have to yep. do that. <laughs> yep. I have, um, at, at Party City, you can buy a very obnoxious, patriotically themed hat that lights up. <laughs> For like fourteen dollars. Oh yeah, um, I have yeah. one that I wear. I have one that I wear when I register voters, like at you know festivals and stuff. Um, yeah. Especially some, if I like if I get to do an announcement, at, you know, somewhere I'll be like, just look for the lady in the ridiculous hat, you know, because I'm easy <laughs> to find in a crowd when I've got this like red, white, and blue light up hat on. You know, I'm, I'm short, so I have to do something to stand out. <laughs> yes, I'm with you. I'm five foot three, fellow yep. fellow short queen right here. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, everybody go out, get yourself a ridiculous hat, get your friends yes. together in a group, yes. bring bring the friends with you, yes. drive your friends to the polls, whatever it takes. Uh, we got to get out there uh, this year, especially. Yeah. And, and let me ask you one final question. Do you think our votes have ever mattered more than they matter this year? Without being partisan, I know that that's a rhetoric that gets thrown around every election is like, it's the most important vote ever. But sure. we really do have, I think, this year a distinct line um, between some candidates that would very much enjoy less democracy um, mm -hmm. and some candidates that have come out very strongly in favor of democracy. Um, and I know which ones I'm voting for, even though I won't tell you. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who I voted for either. So, yeah. But yeah. I bet um, you can guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Another uh, part of making a voting plan, though, is figuring out who you're going to vote for. That's also important. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. You should mention that. Um, yeah. <laughs> you got to do some um, research beforehand. Well, plus, um, because local elections are not partisan. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, you'll notice that mayor might have, I think we have seven or eight people running for mayor in Austin. There is no D or R or L or I or anything next to their name to help you as, like, right. your, you know, your, your clue as to which one you probably should pick if you don't recognize their name. Um, right. And so... Those races are the ones where you really want to make sure that you've done your research, um, you know, yes. and good ways to do that. I mean, I'm going to pimp my own website, which is Vote411. Um, <laughs> hey, Vote411. I was on there this morning. Which is excellent, which is the League of yes. Women Voters. You can do that anywhere in the country. You put in your address and it'll show you what's on your ballot. And then it'll have links to their candidate website. It'll have links to their social media. Um, we send out questions to the candidates, like every candidate for a given office, we send them the same set of questions and then we just print yeah. their answers verbatim. Um, the only changes we make are we translate into Spanish, Vietnamese and simplified Chinese here in Austin. Different cities gotcha. have different requirements. Um, so I mean, their things are translated, um, but we print them like, you know, spelling and grammar errors included. Um, we don't do any editing. Um, 
And so you can do that. You can go through yeah. and then you can actually like check the box next to the person who you're going to vote for. And when you get to the end, you can print out a cheat sheet, which is important because you cannot use your phone within 100 feet of a polling machine. Um, right. So, yeah. So you need to have a physical thing with you. Write it on your arm. Put it on a note card. <laughs> you know, get it. I wouldn't recommend a tattoo. That would be hard to fix. Um, That's aggressive. But, you know, That's aggressive. Yes, that is Some aggressive. people just have a bad memory. And, you know, there yeah, you go. Yeah, you know, I'm, and I am no, not anti-tattoo, as you can see. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was on there this morning, and what I really yeah. appreciated was there were two candidates, and I hadn't heard of either one of them. It mm -hmm. was some very obscure, like, local race, um, yeah. and I've been spending more brain space, as I think we all have, on the national race. Um, yeah. But th there were these two candidates, and I had never heard of them, and they didn't have party affiliation, and so I was like, okay, who am I going to vote for here? And I really appreciated getting to compare their responses uh, to the questions that you guys asked, yeah. and it helped me help me make a decision. I was like, okay, yeah, I like, I like what this person has to say more than I like right. what that person has to say. And it was yeah. very helpful. So uh, vote 411.org. So I'm going to, I'm going to sum things up here. Huh? League of Women Voters, Defending Democracy, more of a Marvel than a DC. Yes. Uh, Marvel's better than DC. Hot take. Objectively. Um, <laughs> voting is harder than it needs to be. Uh, but you need to be informed Go to vote411.org uh, to get information. Uh, don't go to vote.gov to find out your, you know, your your voting uh, location and you check your registration status and that kind of stuff. Um, voter fraud not happening as much as we think. Uh, could yeah. we use that energy for other problems? Probably so. Make a plan to vote. Bring your friends. Silly hats. Did I cover it? Yes. Fantastic. Last thing I will say um, before we sign off. Uh, so uh, when I went to vote today, um, I stood outside in full sunshine for about half an hour before I made it into some shade. And then that was another kind of half hour. And finally, I made it into the building. And I love that there was a long line. That means everybody is fired up about this. Um, but there was one woman who right after I got in, there was a bench right there and she came in and sat down. And she was like, oh, like my back is just killing me. I have an injury and I've been out there in line yeah. for an hour just standing and, and my back really hurts. I don't think it should be harder for that woman to vote. I yeah. think she should be able to bring a chair or whatever she needs to bring to, in order to make it through that line. I think she should get to go to the front of the line. That uh, is actually and... true. That is the case. If she had said something yes. to a poll worker, she would have been allowed to go to the front of the line. Um, there yes. is, unfortunately, the notice that tells you that you have the right to do that is at the front of the line. So you right. have to, <laughs> there, there's actually a posting that's on pink paper in Travis County that is by the yes. door to where you walk in that says you can get preferential line position. Um, but also um, you can vote from your car. Um, there is curbside mm -hmm. voting is required at every polling location in Texas. Um, so yep. there will be a designated parking spot that is not a handicapped parking spot, um, which will have either a button or a phone number you can call or text that says basically tell somebody inside to bring me a voting machine. Um, so yes. there's that. Um, yes. And then also you absolutely can bring a chair. You can bring an umbrella. You can bring snacks. Um, I know there was a lot of news about, you know, Georgia banning, giving out water, but Texas doesn't have what they tried, but they, we don't have that rule. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to bring pizza yeah. to people who are standing in line, you can totally do that. If you want to, if, if you want to help okay. people stand in line by having a couple of chairs people can borrow and just hang out for a couple of hours, that is totally within your right. You can totally do that. Um, okay. You can't talk bring about chairs, politics while you're pizza. doing it. No, nope. yeah, you can't talk about politics while that. you're doing it, but you know, you can, you can help people stand in line. Yeah. We are going to quietly chew our pizza and not discuss the issues yep. and uh, sit in chairs. That's what we're going to do because yes. we help each other out uh, yep. and, and we can do that. Um, Listen, I want to thank you so much for being here with us today, um, helping us uh, get more informed, uh, breaking down some of the misinformation. And uh, thank you for being an election judge. Uh, thank you for uh, voting at 6.59 in the morning. Thanks for helping other people do it the rest of the day. And thanks for defending democracy. Um, you'd look awesome in a cape. Something thank you very much. About. <laughs> I'll, I'll give us some thought.